Hi, everybody, and welcome to my channel. It's Gila here, Saturday Night Stitch. Thank you so much for tuning in. So, today's uh, post is a little bit of a weird one. I was going to call it the March or April sewing plans, but then I kind of realized that because of the quarantine, because of the lockdown, because of coronavirus, there is no Monday, there's no Tuesday, there's no Wednesday, there's no Thursday, there's no Saturday. Consequently, there is no March, April. I cannot tell the passage of time these days i sometimes forget which day it is and we just get completely lost so i'm gonna call this a month sewing plan i'm just gonna call this my you know whenever and this is my fabric haul from when i've been buying things like a drunken sailor just because that's how i deal with stress is one of the ways that i deal with stress i buy fabric i get a dopamine hit and that kind of helps to reduce my anxiety and my stress so Buckle up, guys, because we're about to have some fabric fun a la quarantine. Okay, so starting off, there's a fabric that I'm not even sure why I got it, if I had to be perfectly honest with you, but I must have had some idea when I bought it. Um, I should probably do a video where I share with you my strategy for buying fabrics, because I honestly sometimes forget um, and I go in the moment. But anyway, here we go. Exhibit A is a suiting fabric. Jacadi in style, brown, brownish, no cream, cream and black uh, tile effect. I don't know. I don't know what I was thinking when I got this. It is reversible. I gotta say, I do like that. It's got a nice selvage edge. So whatever I do with it, we're gonna use up that selvage edge and we're gonna play around with the reversibility. This is uh, Minerva Crafts, by the way. I don't know yet what I'm going to make with it. It's very lightweight, has got zero give in it at all. Even on a bias, it doesn't have that much give. We'll have to see what I'm going to make with it. So I have about three meters. Huh, that's good. Now this one. This was an eBay uh, buy, which is really... Uh, okay, one of the few times that I have gotten myself caught out. Now, I consider myself to be a connoisseur when it comes to shopping for fabric online. Very rarely do I ever get disappointed by what I get because I'm quite good at sussing out what the drape and what the handle is going to be like. In fact, most of the times that I get surprised by fabric is when the fabric exceeds my expectations. This one, however... I was caught out and I can only blame, blame coronavirus and the amount of anxiety that I've been under with my chest infection and just trying to deal with stuff. So I wasn't keeping my eyes open. Hence, we ended up with this one. So I was browsing through um, eBay, as you do. And I came across this brilliant looking fabric, which was described as scuba. So I'm not going to put the links for this fabric in the description box down below because spoiler alert, they don't know how to describe fabric. Okay, so... They called this scuba. I kid you not. It's a scuba stretch fabric on it, right? And I bought it because so I was like, oh, snap. Look at that. It's a border print. It's got bright florals, jewel magenta tones, deep blues, lovely emerald greens. And then you've got this border with fuchsia, a mix of floral and geometric prints. I don't even have to do the print mixing myself. It's already done for me on this fabric. And I was like, it's a scuba. I'm going to make a really nice dress. And it was going to be like a 50 style dress with the bodice would be the floral. And then it would have like a really poofy gathered skirt with that at the bottom. And I was so excited. I was so excited. I could not wait to re receive the scuba. And because it was going to be scuba, I wasn't going to put any zippers or anything like that. Because scuba stretches out and it's got excellent recovery. One of my fa favorite fabrics to sew with. It's not scuba. This this is a cotton sateen. It's a cotton sateen. And so when I received it at first, I thought, wait, what? Wait, 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 what? I'm pretty sure that was a scuba. And I went and I double checked. And it was, it said scuba on the description. So, ladies and gents, I have checked my statistics. There are a few men who actually watch this channel. So, ladies and gents, I have a fabric that I have no idea what to do with because it doesn't really fit anything that I had planned for it because I thought it was going to be a scuba. Ta-da! But doesn't it look pretty though? 
It does look pretty, doesn't it? But this is going to get put into the naughty pile because my perception of it has been marred by the fact that the sellers clearly do not know what fabric is based upon their descriptions. And this wasn't the only thing I got from them, sadly. I also got something else which was <laughs> hugely disappointed. It's like a rookie, rookie error on my part. I don't even know how I missed it. But then when I went back to check, I could see that, oh God, it doesn't even look like scuba in the pictures. But I was all all in a, I don't know, coronavirus funk or whatever it is. So this is another one that I got. As you may or may not know, I'm kind of into vintage sewing at the moment. So consequently, I'm falling in love with a lot of the vintage prints that I'm seeing, especially the 70s and 60s style that are bright florals popping. I love color anyway. And it kind of feels like those would have been great decades for me to have been alive. And so I wanted something to do a 60s dress with. And I saw this and on the pictures, it looked amazing. And it was described as like a, a cotton poplin and it looked really dark but it turns out this is more like a cotton voil so when I hold it up like that can you see my face it's quite transparent it's very see-through it's very very lightweight see you can kind of see my hands there so I was just like oh not what I thought I thought it was going to be a slightly thicker fabric and I wanted to make um, a nice 60s style dress, a sleeveless boat neckline with some box pleats on the skirt. And this just isn't going to work for that. It is far, far too lightweight for it. So that was error number two. And then error number three, same place on eBay again. I got this. This was advertised as a brocade, as a jacquard. Now, I don't know about you guys, but when I hear brocade or jacquard, I imagine immediately something that's really thickly woven because normally brocades, they've got, you know, like up to about 16 uh, whiffs of fabric uh, woven in to create that raised, that embossed effect that you get. And on the pictures, again, it looked really amazing on the pictures. And I'm sure they doctored their pictures because this, this, this is so lightweight, very, very lightweight, um, really cheap quality as well. Uh, it de I would have never bought this had I seen this in person. And I had this idea that I was going to make a skirt where I play around with the stripes. And the skirt was supposed to be A-line because it was a, I thought it was a jacquard. So it would have the structure to hold the volume of the A-line shape. But this is very drapey. It's like, a, yeah, it's not even nice. You can see, you can see close up there. Uh-huh. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I, I just, I really don't like it. Uh, so I received this um, about two weeks ago and I was trying to think what I can do with it. Should I just go ahead and try and return it? <sighs> I've never returned fabric um, on eBay before. That would be a new thing for me. So those, um, those three were the ones that I got from eBay. Um, and I made a lot of rookie mistakes uh, with those showing you once again that no matter how experienced you are in the art of buying fabrics, you can still make mistakes. Okay, I'll show you another eBay uh, purchase that actually turned out quite okay. <laughs> moving on to um, moving on to a better note. Okay, okay so this one was a scuba, is what they listed it as, but it was actually a ponty. Okay, but it, it turned out okay, all right? So I loved the bright floral print, which kind of looks like flowers that are strewn over a geometric tile effect. I loved the pops of yellow and the turquoises and the flowers. And I just thought that this is really fabulous. And I'm just going to make another simple, simple sew dress out of it because the print is just so powwow. And it's just going to be just like that, right up against me. And I can wear it with yellow earrings. So it's very bright. It's very popping. I got a meter of it. And a meter should be enough to make, it is enough to make um, this sort of simple, simple dress like the one that I'm wearing now. So this was a good eBay purchase. I was very happy with this one. And I was so happy because I was just receiving all the parcels, you know, it was just coming over like, oh, I've got a parcel. Oh, what is in it? Oh, what is in it? 
You know what? Those people that say retail therapy doesn't help you, that is a lie. Because retail therapy feels good. Feels good. If it doesn't feel good, you're not buying the right, the right sort of thing for yourself. For me, it's fabric. Buying fabric just makes me feel good no matter what. Okay, so that was a decent eBay purchase there. And then I've got some fabrics from Fabrics for All because... They have had to shut down, obviously, uh, because of coronavirus, but they still have their own line offering open. And I'll put the link in the description box down below. Do also go check them out. And she's got some lovely fabrics. Again, she's still got the John Calder fabrics at one third off. So they're retailing at about £10 per meter. So you can go check that out as well. Speaking of John Calder, I got some John Calder fabric, which was £10 per meter. And it's this linen look viscose crepe. It's incredibly popular in the sewing um, community. I've definitely seen a lot of people sew up with this, but I quite like the drape um, for it. And it's linen look, so it's got that slubby texture to it, but it isn't actually linen. It's more of a viscosity fabric, so it's got a lot of drape to it. I have no idea what I'm going to make with it. I have no idea. I just wanted to buy it, and I'll be honest with you. I think I just read the news and the news was just so depressing. And I was just like, you know what? I'm not going to limit myself. I'm just going to buy fabric that I want to buy because, you know, maybe we're all going to be dead in another 12 months. It was a really low place, but it's beautiful fabric. It's beautiful fabric. Okay. And then she also had some linens um, from, I think it's Hemmings. And Hemmings, they actually do designer fabrics for some designer houses. So I was like, mm, good stuff. And this is just really beautiful, bright colors. This is going to be a skirt, which is inspired by a skirt that I saw in a Bowden catalog. But I just loved the yellow and the red and the sort of um, irreverent sketch of a leaf. It's just really beautiful and popping. And it's going to be perfect for summer when I'm frolicking in my garden. Oh, love this. Love this. Um, do you know, I can't even remember how much these were because that's the sort of funk I was in when I was buying these fabrics. Um, so, but, you know, I'll put the links down there. And this is a viscose. A little bit tame for me, but... I liked how these look like pressed flowers that are 3D suspended against a dotty background. So it's quite, quite muted, very feminine and quite muted. Definitely not going to have it up against my face. I don't think it works. I might do like a skirt, a tiered skirt or something, kind of like this one that I made here. Um, using the John Calder fabric. So this is a viscous fabric, and this was from Fabrics for All, and this was via mail order. So again, it was like this little popping candies, just like candy rain, except it's fabric rain, you know, and it just made me feel happy. Um, yeah, and I got the matching fabric for it as well. Okay. Um, I've got a refashion project to do. Okay, so there was this fab, uh, this skirt, that I found in a charity shop because I actually love going to charity shops. And this was before coronavirus, before we were shut down, before they all got closed down. And I found this. So it's a size, it's a UK 24, a European 52. So there's quite a lot of fabric here. And the skirt is more or less um, brand new and worn. And I love, love this jersey fabric. So I kind of feel like there's enough fabric on there for me to make myself something either a simple uh, sheath dress or a skirt. Plus, it's also got this really great elastic. And best of all, this was only 50p. So it's 50p for fabric. That's enough for me to make a dress or a top. And I've got some elastic for making a skirt as well. So I was like, yes, 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 yes. So that was that. And then I also have uh, some fabrics from Minerva. Oh, hang on. No, I'll start with the John Lewis ones. So I stopped by John Lewis and they had a sale and I saw some really gorgeous, gorgeous navy blue and white background viscose elastin jersey. See, it's blue and it's got a white print and it's got a beautiful stretch. And it's got like a really beautiful texture when you touch it. Okay, you know that chalk mark there. 
It's because these fabrics have been sitting in a bag downstairs for a while now. <laughs> but yeah, it's really beautiful. I'm thinking just a very simple dress, either Macaul's M6886 or something with some princess line seams and just a, a flare or a skater dress, you know. But this is lovely fabric. I was very happy to get it. And we'll keep on the blue jerseys theme. I've got some Tencel jersey that I got from Minerva. And I am going to use these to create a dress. So this Tencel, even though it's jersey, it's got a very tiny, tiny amount of jersey in it. Because, see, it doesn't have as much stretch to it. But yet it has just enough stretch to be able to give you that comfort that you need. So look, so this is the cross grain where you're supposed to have some stretch. So this is me, like, really giving it my all. I know it doesn't look like it because I look so elegant, but I'm actually really giving it my all. Good. Okay, so if I compare that to, say, this one, which is a viscose jersey, you can kind of see how with this one, I'm going just like that, you know. Uh, so this was, it's quite interesting. So initially I thought I was going to make some more like a wrap dress with it. But when I received it and realized that it's actually a little bit on the thicker side, I'm going to do more like a an oversized sweater dress with some with a hoodie and some pockets. Um, this is going to be fun. And I'll play around with the contrasting fabrics. Yeah. So it's not quite like French terry. If you're familiar with French terry, this isn't quite like uh, French terry. But I think that these colors will go well together. And I'm thinking of using a, like a, a hot pink piping for some of the key elements. It's going to be a fun thing. Um, to make and I also have some linen so this is Italian linen and I'm going to make a shirt from a 1980s birder for my husband so it's going to be like an oversized 1980s style shirt now when I got this again this was before Corona. I feel like for the next few months, everything is either going to be, you know, we're going to have to refer to things as pre-Corona plus Corona. The sewing plans for this were made pre-Corona uh, based on the idea that we normally go to the Italian Lake District for three weeks in the summer holidays and we go camping there. And linen is so comfortable in the beautiful, hot Italian summers. My husband wanted a linen shirt, so I was going to make him a linen shirt. But I'm still going to make him a linen shirt anyway, because I do know that we will get through this. That there will um, be an end to that. And I know that because the queen said so in her very beautiful speech. So holding on to that. So here we go. It's a really beautiful, slubby, textured linen. Uh, it's got a wonderful surface uh, feel to it. But I really like it. I think it's going to make a really nice shirt for him. And because he's um, he's got dark brown hair and he's got brown eyes, so his coloring is so suited to this sort of, um, uh, this you know, this tonal shade of this linen. So that's going to be a fun make, and I'm going to be using an 80s pattern for that. So it's got me nice and baggy. <laughs> it's pretty cool. And I also have some scuba. I'm kind of going through a scuba phase. I like scuba fabric and it's very bold and very graphic some might even say this is tasteless but that's okay it's a uh, polka dots different size polka dots uh black on a white background and then you've got the graphic rose print yeah the idea behind this is that i'm gonna make a two-piece like you know how there are those Adidas tracksuits that people wear around the house, except for their Adidas or their Nike? I'm going to make a tracksuit with this instead. <laughs> it's going to be fun. And I'm, um, I'm looking for a grow grain ribbon that will go down the side and down the side of the trousers. So it's just going to be a fun, a fun make for something that I can wear around the house. But then again... Um, Take this with a grain of salt. I do have a tendency of changing my sewing plans because if the fabric speaks to me, it changes. But when I got this, that was the idea um, to get it. And then I also have some African wax print fabrics, okay? And these were uh, um, inspired by uh, Dovetailed. So I interviewed Megan, uh, so not Megan, this is the name of the pattern. <laughs> Megan is a pattern from Dovetailed Fabrics. Um, 
So I interviewed Adaku Parker, who is the founder and owner of dovetail.co.uk for my podcast, which the episode is going to come in a few weeks. Um, everything got derailed. And as I was talking to her, well, I reached out to her to ask her if she would be willing to be on the podcast because I'd been buying a lot of um, African wax print fabrics. And she also has an African wax print fabric shop as well as um, venturing into doing sewing patterns. And she's also got a book coming out in August about how to sew your own garments using African wax print patterns. So she's like a really amazing um, lady. And this is one of her recent patterns, the Megan which I want to make using this uh, fabric here. Okay, now I admit I got this fabric on eBay and that's because I just loved the pinkiness. The pink just said Hila. It was like Hila, 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 Hila. And I was like, yes, yes, I hear you. And here we go. I think it's going to be fabulous, fabulous. I want to do the pockets. I'm going to do the dress in one direction and I'm going to do the pockets going in another direction. But see, yellow and pink. I love yellow and pink. Pink and yellow are like my colors, okay? And then I also got a dashiki type fabric, which is to make um, a, a top for one of my kids. So these panels, they come like that yeah and the idea is that you can easily make a simple style top just by cutting out the neckline over here and putting the facing in and then sewing down to create the sleeves and so you can have a very simple top and it's a fuchsia one which <laughs> the funny story behind this is that I actually wanted to buy this for my oldest son and make it for him for his birthday because his birthday is also in April but then when it arrived again rookie error I didn't check the measurements it's actually too short for him so now it's going to be made for his younger brother instead but it's really beautiful it's really vibrant I used to have one that got lost during a, a family trip so I'm just trying to replace that one okay so that is all of the fabrics that I have and as you can see there is a, a huge preponderance of, of pinks, just like, look at that, pink, 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 I love pink. And that's okay. I fought it for a long time, but that's okay. I love pink. Okay, so that is my fabric hole, my whenever fabric hole, whenever sewing plants in this nadir of a life that we are living at the moment in quarantine. And I hope that you enjoyed that, that you found it entertaining, um, useful, um, and informative. And if you did, do give it a big thumbs up down below. But even if you didn't and you've watched up until the end, you know, just give it a big thumbs up, you know, because you watched it already. And I'd love to hear from you. Um, what do you think I should make with this fabric? Do you think the dress is okay or I should change it into a skirt? Let me know in the comments box down below. And until I see you next time, guys, I hope you're staying safe and that you're all healthy and... Oh, thank you. Thank you all so much um, for watching. Happy sewing. Bye.